Hey, it's Courier Girl, and I got a question for you. Is it better to start your own logistics or courier company, or is it better to run for somebody else? I wanted to talk about this today because I've had a few people ask me that very question. You know, should I just start my own courier company? I don't like giving a cut to somebody else. You know, if you're working for somebody else, then they're going to get a cut of whatever you make. You're not going to get all the money. Well, at this stage of my life, I've owned a lot of companies, probably a dozen or so, and I've had employees and I've had delivery vehicles and warehouses and, you know, all sorts of overhead. And I kind of like not dealing with all that stuff. I'm willing to give away a little bit of my income so somebody else can deal with all that stuff. So that's my take. I like driving for someone else. I don't want all the headaches it goes with having a courier company, but let's kind of compare it a little bit. So when you're driving for yourself, you have your vehicle and you have your insurance for your vehicle, which you'd have anyway. You have to pay for gas. Um, this is all assuming you're driving your own vehicle and you have to pay for maintenance and you have to keep some records. You need to keep a mileage log and it's good to go over your pay sheets and make sure you're getting paid correctly. Um, and you have to pay estimated taxes if you're a 1099 um, contract worker. And I think that's it for the most of the responsibility. Um, if you have a flat tire, if your vehicle breaks down, then you're out of service for that day and you call the person that you're working for and they get somebody else to do your work. Now, you can also take a vacation, but you're not going to get paid for it. You know, you are a contract worker, so if you take time off, you don't get paid for it. But you can plan that in advance and save money in advance so that you are, you know, you are ready for that eventuality. All right, so let's go and look at the courier business side of it. So if you own a courier business, then you have customers. Um, sometimes you're a wholesaler and you are working for larger courier companies. Sometimes you have direct business where you are, you have a contract with a you know, company, a bank, you know, if you're doing medical, you might have it with a hospital or, or doctor's offices or whatever. And you are providing drivers to do and to do the work and routes and you have like, you know, you're making up the rules and you're making sure everything um, goes slowly and you're also providing probably some type of admin staff to do customer service, to take orders, you know, when people have a job, if it's not already on a set route, they'll have to call it into the office or do it some other way, you know, to do your payroll, to do all of your paperwork, bookkeeping, all that kind of stuff. So as a courier company, you are going to have, even if you're dealing with contract workers, they're kind of like your employees. You have to have drivers, all right? That's the big thing. And it's constant battle to get and keep good drivers because you'll have people that want to drive, but then, oh, I don't want to drive today. So they'll just call off or they just won't even show up or they're unreliable. They'll drive today, but not tomorrow or they will cause problems with a the customer. They won't follow protocol or they will cop an attitude. You know, that actually happened a few months ago. One of the people, one of the drivers for the, one of the companies I work for, copped an attitude, got in a big argument with a big customer and security was called and everything. Well, that guy was fired, obviously, but that's something that you, as the owner of the courier company, have to deal with. You have to cover routes when people call off. You have to sometimes go out and do it yourself. In fact, a lot of times you have to go out and do it yourself. The one guy that I worked for called me at like 7 o'clock on Labor Day because he had to cover for somebody because they didn't have anyone to do this run. Um, 
he called me at 4.30 in the morning one morning. I'm up at 4.30 because I start that early, but he called me asking some questions about another route that I had done because he had to fill in because the person who was supposed to do it didn't show up. So that kind of stuff happens. You're like on call 24 seven. It's very hard to take time off, to take a real vacation. You might be able to get a day off here and there, but to take a real vacation and you don't get holidays off and you don't get holiday pay and you know, you don't get any of that stuff because you're the person who's in charge of making sure all the work gets done. Plus you have overhead. Um, you have your admin staff or your bookkeeping. Even if you're outsourcing it, you're still paying for it. Um, payroll has to be covered. So you have to pay a service to do that or do it yourself, which is time. Taxes have to be filed and company taxes are more expensive than personal taxes to have them prepared. Um, you have to worry about if you have larger trucks or depending on what you're doing, you have to have um, DOT certification and you have to follow their rules make sure that your vehicles are maintained um, sometimes you have your own vehicles in addition to the drivers that are driving for you for instance the one company that I work for we all drive our own vehicles but they also have a couple company vehicles that are like if my van broke down I could drive one of their vans for a couple days or sometimes they have to do other work and they have to have a company vehicle for that. And they also have box trucks because, you know, most people don't have a box truck sitting in their driveway. So they have box trucks and drivers for those box trucks for bigger routes. Now, they don't get paid as much as an owner, what they call an owner operator, someone who has their own vehicle because... The courier company is paying for the maintenance and the vehicle and the insurance and the gas and all of that stuff. So that means that the driver gets less of a cut because they're not covering all that themselves, if that makes sense. So, oh, and then you got to get contracts. So you have to figure out who needs your services. Um, you're better off getting contracts with a company because that you know is going to be steady because you can't have drivers just sitting around. Oh, we might have something for you next Tuesday. Um, they're not going to stay. They're going to go work for someone who can give them steady work. So you have to constantly be going out and getting new work, bringing new work in, getting new contracts, large, small, and in between. Sometimes you're going to go to a company and they're going to be like, well, our contract doesn't inspire, it doesn't expire for a year. So you can bid on it next year, but there's no, no telling if you're going to get it or not. So there's a lot to running a logistics company. Now, when and why would I start my own logistics company? If I had been in this business for several years and I was running all aspects. I'm not just a driver. I've run the inside. I've run the office. I've run, you know, I've, I'm familiar with the customer service. I'm familiar with the sales end of it. I know what it's like to be a driver. If I have that kind of experience, then maybe I would think about going out on my own and starting my own business. It's kind of like, you know, people who start restaurants. Well, if you've never worked at a restaurant, you're going to suck at owning a restaurant. But if you have experience working at a restaurant, especially in a bunch of different positions, including management, you're going to be, your odds of being successful are going to be much higher if you go out on your own. So if you think you want to own a logistics company, my advice would be first get a job as a driver. Um, get really good at that. If it's a large enough company, then see if you can become a lead driver or get into management. It might take a few years to do that, but do all of it with the mindset that you are learning the business to get into the business. All right. Think of it as education that you're actually getting paid for instead of paying for. And then when you think you're ready, you can start going out on your own. The other reason to do that is you're going to have a lot more contacts. You're going to know a lot more people. You're going to know the ins and outs of several different types of businesses, especially if you work with a few different courier companies. And you're going to be on much more solid footing when you start your own company. And then the other thing I would do is set aside 
a percent of your paycheck, you determine how much to be your startup fund because it's not free to start a business. It's going to cost money. And I know I've tried to start businesses on shoestrings and I've done it, but it's a lot more work. It's a lot easier if you have a fund already there with money so that you can start up. You can get your business license, your insurance, um, all the stuff that you need to do to start up, if that makes sense. My throat's getting froggy. All right, that's it for now. <clears throat> I hope that this was helpful, and I hope that this will help you make a better decision about whether you should start your own logistics company or just be a driver for someone else for a while. Peace out, and I'll see you on the road.